our sins were great. His love was greater. As Christ hung on the cross for all of humanity, he spoke one final word. It is finished, he said. With that, he gave up his spirit and he died. But what had been finished? It was the end of death's power, the end of sin's control, and the end of the evil one's reign. Because Jesus was laid in a borrowed tomb. Three days later, he rose from the grave. It was Easter. It was resurrection. We do not live to celebrate this victory once a year. No. We are Easter people. Every single day is victory. I have a lot of friends who are funeral directors, and a couple of years ago, one of them posted this on Facebook. He said that you should live each and every day of your life so that the preacher doesn't have to lie at your funeral service. And I, I have done a lot of funerals, over probably 150 or you know, a lot, way too many in my book. And every time, that becomes so true. And I love it when I can... When I've known that person, I've seen them walk with Jesus every day, and, and it's awesome. And what I see in those moments is, is someone who God says, well done, good and faithful servant. And I can amen that, and, and everybody in the house goes, yeah, amen, and it's awesome. But it always makes me think, what about my life? What would they say? Because very often we have people who will step up. I did a funeral just the other day. Son went up and spoke about his dad. It's kind of awesome. You know, hearing him talk about what his dad meant to him. And I thought, that's cool. What would my kids say? What would they say? Right? Would they, would they, would they say things about my love of puns and, and dad jokes? And, you know, I got a million groaners. Matt's like, yes, there are many of those. But I pray that, that they would say, you know what? Yeah, dad wasn't perfect, man. He loved Jesus. Like, God was everything to him. And yeah, he messed up, and he, and he did things right. Because none of those, those times should be perfect, because none of us are. In fact, I really think that the more godly someone is, the less it's about them. The more they would stop you and go, wait, wait, wait a second. I, I didn't deserve any of what God gave me. That was 100% a gift. And all I was trying to do in my life was to show how amazing that gift giver has been to me Every single day. This beggar got more than he deserved day in, day out. Man, that's what I want, right? I'm, put that on my tombstone, right? Day in, day out, all about Jesus. I don't know. Maybe we can shorten it up or something, figure it out. I won't be around, so I'll be like, cool, you know, whatever they want to do. As long as there's like a guitar on there somewhere, something like that. Uh, but we, we, we try, right? We, we, we want to say good things. We want to be able to point to faith and point to Jesus. So I want to ask you. What do you see when you see the, the people of faith, right? It's All Saints Day today, All Saints Sunday. We're, we're remembering those who lived the faith, who died trusting in Jesus. And there's a lot of beautiful stories, aren't there? So what do you see in their life? See, I pray that we see Jesus at work, because when I'm talking about someone of faith in this place, when I stand in the pulpit or stand here and tell about someone's life and how they live for Jesus, the point is not them. It's Jesus. We all got a front row seat at, at God's work, and we need that, don't we? Don't we sometimes wonder, like, does God exist? Does he, does he really care? Is he even working at all? And, and I think that people are the proof. The fact that we love when we're being attacked, right? When, we, when we, we're calm when in the midst of the storm, when we go, you know what, we're, 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 we lose everything, but we're like, you know what, I got God, and God loves me, and he's with me. 
And even when we mess up, that, that's probably one of the biggest times where we, where we don't try to explain it away or go, oh, yeah, you know what, I, I deserve to be angry. We go, no, 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 that was wrong. I, I, I need to be forgiven for that. Please forgive me for that. Right? That's, that's what we see, hopefully. In, in, John's, in John's letter, John also wrote the gospel. He also wrote Revelation. So um, we're getting a lot of John's writings today. Um, I, I want us to look at, grab your Bibles, or um, I think the, the words will be up on the screen, because we're going to go back to two verses. Uh, I, I believe this section begins in uh, chapter 2, uh, 28 and 29, and then, and then launches into 3, which we heard earlier as our second reading. I, this was one of those passages where th- there are some where there's, there's a lot of t- text to, to cover, but I, get, but I get stuck on like one phrase, and this was the beginning one, where he says, now little children, abide in him. It's been hard for me to get past that this week, and I think that's good. But you could think of, of I, and, I'll, and I'll say it, out of doubt, every single time you have sinned, when you've been short with somebody, when you've been selfish, when you've been arrogant, whatever it is, right? Go through the list. It was because you weren't doing this, right? Because if, if we're abiding in him, I'm remaining in him. I'm, stick, I'm staying with him. You know what I mean? Like, like he's my constant companion through life, right there with me every single day. I'm hanging on his every word, right? So Bible study and, and, and Bible reading isn't just, oh, man, I got to do my devotions today. It's like, man, God's got a message for me today. I want to hear it. What is it? That's what it means to abide in him. It's hungering and thirsting, as, as, as uh, Matthew said in the gospel, as Jesus said in the gospel, Hunger and thirsting for righteousness. Lord, I, 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 I need more of, of who you are and what you are doing in my life. Because let's face it, if I'm busy doing that, if Christ, who is my life, not just a part of my life, he is my life. So if I'm, if I'm, if I'm abiding in him, like trusting in him with everything I've got, what happens when he comes again? Is he interrupting anything? That might be a good question. I didn't think about that in early service. Sorry, guys. You guys get a bonus one. Um, Right? Is he interrupting something else? Would he always be interrupting me doing something else? Or is he just, he comes down, right? Heavens open up. The trumpet sounds, and he's like, all right, Fred, come on home. And and he doesn't have to get my attention because he's already got, you see what I'm saying? He's already got my attention. It's not like, well, Jesus, wait a second, wait a second. I'm, I'm busy doing this. Because I, I, I'm never, I should, we, listen, we should never be busy doing something else. Now, I'm not saying we go off to a monastery. I'm not saying, right, you get, you get, we're all going to get brown robes and walk around chanting Gregorian chant, oh, you know, or anything else like that. But man, if I'm working on a car, I'm doing it for his glory. You know what I mean? If, I, if I'm hanging out with my kids, it's, to his glory. It's because he, he, he brought that all together, right? If I'm, if I'm working on something at work, right? I'm in a meeting. I'm, I'm, I'm out I'm driving a school bus. I'm doing whatever I'm doing. I'm still, like he's still there, still working, still changing me. So when he appears, John says, we'll have confidence, not in ourselves, but confidence because what a friend I have in Jesus and he is there. Washed away all my sins. He loves me. He's with me every day. And, I, and it, it should be like, all oh, right, cool, you're here. And you've been here. And you're still here. And cool. Now, the only change is going to be a change of venue, right? New heavens, new earth. It's going to be a change of me being right, right from, a, from a, you know, this, this frame that's less <laughs> perfect left a long time ago uh, when never was there. But you know what I mean? Like, like, like it will be tra- we will all be transformed. Not just our souls, but all of us. New bodies, how cool is that? And so we will not shrink from him in shame at his coming because I know that he's not coming to judge me. That judgment's already taken place. He's already decided, right, as he bled and died and rose, that I am his, that I am loved, that I am forgiven. 
So that should put a whole new spin on, on Jesus coming again. And it should be something that we're waiting for every single day. Saying to him, right, today, Jesus says, today the day, today the day when everything changes, like for, for eternity. Imagine living that. Imagine looking forward to that every day. Man, that's, that's far better than Thanksgiving or Christmas, which is awesome. I love it. But man, far better. So, so, so he keeps going. He says, so if you know that he is righteous, you may be sure that everyone who practices righteousness has been born of him. That's why I use that saying at the beginning of the sermon, to live your life every day so that the preacher doesn't have to lie at your funeral service. There is a connection, and I think sometimes we've made it separate. There's, there's real life living, at work, school, doing all those things, and then there's church stuff and, and Jesus stuff. So it's all the same. And we're never saved by what we do. Look at what it says. That he says, look, you show me somebody who practices righteousness. You show me somebody who loves Jesus with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength, who loves their neighbor as themselves, who knows they are saved by Jesus' love and forgiveness. I'll show you somebody who has been born of him. Isn't that what Jesus said in John 1? Same author. This is the beginning of his gospel, he says this. I'm trying to turn to it. Really quick, sorry about that. It's up on the screen. Uh, verse 12. Now, he, he had said in the previous verse that uh, the world didn't know him. The world wanted nothing to do with him. It says he came to his own, even his own people, and they didn't receive him. He said, but to all who did receive him, right, to those who believe, those who trust in him, what did he do? Who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. How cool is that? That we've been born of God, reborn, remade. Our, our, listen, the world around us is on an endless quest to find the secret. Am I right? Every TikTok that exists, ha, this is going to be a thing. Right? It's this life hack. It's, you've been using WD-40 all wrong your whole life. Boom. This is going to revolutionize everything. No, it's not. It's going to help you to keep, make sure your door's not squeaky or find a different use for something. Right? You've been opening bananas the wrong way. or something. You know, I mean, it's like we're, we're chasing all these things. But he's like, you, you already have something that you, can, that you can't even imagine. You're now in him. Forgiven by him. And when he comes again, you don't have to shrink in shame. You can be confident knowing that he loves you, called you his own, has adopted you. And so how do we live now? What's the response of faith? It's to look at what, what would please him. Which, by the way, is a life that will cost us. But in the end, gives us more than we can imagine. In other words, people might think we're weird. They might think we're odd. They may avoid us. But we're going to be about what helps others. It's going to make a difference in their life, even if it costs me. See, that's huge. That's different. That's what it means to practice this righteousness. And so, of course, there's going to be a correlate. Of course, when we do a service for somebody, right, who has lived this way, we're just seeing someone who's been born of God. And so he wants, he, he, he calls our attention to something else in, verse three, in chapter 3, verse 1. He says, see what kind of love the Father has given to us. This is the other section that stopped me, and it's been really hard to get past this week. Kept getting hung up on it. You know, like a record that keeps going back, going back. And it's like, listen to this, listen to this. Because I let passages like this, and we often, what kind of love the Father has given us, we, we kind of just, we kind of breeze by it, don't we? John's going, no, I want you to look. Like, look. Stop what you're doing. You ever, have you ever done that? Like, just cleared everything else away and go, okay, what kind of love has the Father given to me? Like, how much does God actually love me? And here's, here's what it is. That we would be called children of God. And so we are. How many of us walk around like we're not? Worried about it? Unsure about it? I want you to know that is who you are. Because listen, 
you could say a lot of things about you. Like, if I had never met you, I could come up to me. You could come up to me and say, you know what? I, I run this big corporation, and, and, right, and I'm the CEO, and I'm this and I'm that. Now, if I don't know you, and, and, and if I can't have no way to check that, oh, man, I might be thinking that you're that. But are you? Does anybody call you CEO? They might not. <laughs> See what I'm saying? So I could say all kinds of things. We could think all kinds of things. We could hope all kinds of things. That's not what he's talking about. He's like, you are children of God. In fact, you are called children of God, declared that by God, by Jesus. That's how he sees us. That's how we should see each other and see our lives. Because he says that is who we are. It's not wishful thinking. It's not a show. It's not something we're trying to do. Now, again, not everybody's going to get this. Not, not everyone's going to love this. And so, in fact, he, he, John almost piggybacks on what Jesus had said in, in John 1. He goes, we're, we're God's children now. Well, no, actually, let me back up a little bit. So the reason why the world does not know us is it didn't know him. I think we're often surprised that, like, not everybody gets what it means to live as a child of God. We, we ran into this yesterday. Um, we were at the Goodwill, right? We're, we're, we're just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in the back, and I, and I hear, like, gospel music really loud. And I'm, like, going, like, like wow, man, praising the Lord. Yeah, I like this. This is good, right? My shopping experience. Thank you, Goodwill. You're, you're, you're providing me with some, some rousing gospel music. And I realized it was just some dude on his iPhone, right? So an older guy, older gentleman was in the back there, and he's just, he's just he's waiting for his wife to finish or whatever, and he's just listening. Really super loud. And so they're at checkout, and we're at checkout. And it was an example of what John's talking about here. So, and I had no idea this was coming. And it was like, like whoa, I still, and I'm not, we're not making this up. My wife can vouch for me, right? It was, it was crazy. The, the, the wife starts preaching super loud. Repent, the kingdom of God's at hand, and just warning people about their wicked ways and all this other stuff. And the lady in front of us at the checkout kept saying, no thanks. Repent of my sins. She's like, who are you? Right? When he'd say, say something about Jesus and have it, she said, no, not me. Sorry, no thanks. And as she walks out, she looks at us and she looks at the, at the cash register, the, the attendant there, and she says, I got a one-way ticket to hell. And I was like, man, I wanted to cry. I was like, like, seriously? Like that someone would actually say that? Like, like, they, like, like, they, were, like they didn't like that, and so they'd rather go to spend eternity separated from God than to like, maybe consider what that person was saying. Now, think what you want about somebody going full on, <laughs> really loud preaching in a goodwill. It's kind of weird, I'll admit. But I think that person loves, those people love Jesus, and they love me, and they love the people around to tell us about Jesus. Maybe a better way to do it, but, you know, but it was just so so, so weird to have somebody actually say, I'm going to choose hell rather than heaven. Wow. The reason the world doesn't know us, it didn't know him. Didn't know him. That, that lady didn't know what to do with that. I'm praying. I'm praying it was just an, an, an overreaction. Now, I want her to know that she's got, that, that, right, that God died for her. Jesus gave his life for her as well. That's who we are, beloved, he says. We are God's children. When? Not some other time, not, not, not in the future, but now. And what we will be has not yet appeared. And we know that when Jesus comes back, when he appears, we'll be like him because that we shall see him as he is. He, look, is, isn't he the one that's transforming us? Isn't it his truth that we're in? Isn't it his body and blood that set us free? Isn't it all that? So why wouldn't we? be being transformed into people who are like him. That's what John's saying. And we ain't done yet. God, not done with you. Not done with me. We will see him clearly. 
without all the fog, without all the, because the, here's the problem. And I, know, I know this is your response because it's mine too. It's like, man, but you don't know what life is like. Like I could say amen here because there, there's not all the other stuff that's waiting for me when I go home or when I go to work or when I go to school. It's going, no, you're, you're God's child in that moment too. And there's going to be a time when that's all gone and it's just you and him. But it's not just you and him, right? It's us and him. It's the company of heaven, right? It's, it's what we saw in Revelation. From every tribe, from every nation. And I want to be there. And I, want, I want all of us to be there. And I want all of us to live that reality right now and to live lives that say, yeah, that's where I'm headed. That's who I am. Everyone, he says, he finishes it out, who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. We've got to get out of our heads this notion that I am saved because of what I do. Because I, some, we'll hear this verse and go, oh, that means I've got to purify myself. If I don't purify myself, then I won't. He's going, no, he's going, look, if you hope in him, and, and I'll grab the other verses too, if you abide in him, if you know that he is righteous, if you know what kind of love he has given to you, if you know that you are his beloved, if you know that you are his children now, then that's who you are. And you're going to see stuff, right? We all do. I do. I'm at the front of the line on this one, people. Stuff that doesn't fit. Ways of thinking, ways of acting that, that, don't, that, 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 are, that are counter to what God wants for me. That's what it means, purifying myself. I say, like, Jesus, this is who you were, and I want to be that for people. I want to I I share you with people, not me, you and your love, your hope, the hope you give us. Of course, I, I think we should have, we should tell the people, and I want you to do this this week, that person that's shown you who God is, who encourages you about Jesus, I want you to thank them. Because I think, I, I think what, what bothers us sometimes is we wait till the funeral service, don't we? And we talk about those people and how awesome they were and what they did, which is great. That's cool. Let's, let's still keep that going. But let's thank them now for the inspiration they are now. And let's be those kinds of people Right now, children of God, because we hope in him, and we want to live his way because of him. So that the story that's told, the thing that's on my tombstone, would preach Christ, be about his love for me and the difference it's made. In his name, amen.